All right. Look at us. Here we are on the beach, huh? Nice fall day, not a packed beach. We're going to be doing a tour today of Coney Island. We'll be showing you around Coney Island. How about that? Eric, how you doing? I'm in Coney Island. I'm good. Good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm excited for this one. I think it's going to be a popular video. Um, you guys may recognize Coney Island from, you know, your nightmares. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You might recognize it from, you know, movies like The Warriors, huh? 1979. Here's a little uh, trivia, Eric. Uh, Paramount pulled the advertising from that movie uh, after a few days because there's so much gang violence at the, at the screenings, huh? Isn't that crazy? Can you dig it? Cyrus uh, impersonation, but uh, yeah, anyways, uh, good movie. Um, but it was actually named one of the top 25 most controversial movies of all time. Uh, right up there with the new Matrix movie that you recommended me. Wow. That was so terrible, it should have been banned in every country. Anyways, we're digressing. Uh, that's just a little trivia off the top of the head. Hey, you, mandatory Mr. Robot reference. I don't know what you're Coney talking about. Mr. Robot, yeah, I don't know who watches that. Anyways, uh, look, here's the deal, guys. We're gonna be going to Coney Island. It's gonna be an amazing day. Uh, all right. Before we start, guys, if you've seen more than one of these videos already, please check out the Patreon. That's what helps fund these things. There's some extras on there. I started a little podcast uh, on the Patreon only. Uh, I got a little stuff on there, extras, all that crap. Anyways, that. Also, like the video, subscribe, please. That helps analytics. Uh, helps bump us up ahead of all the, uh, you know, uh, reaction videos to watching the new Matrix movie. Uh, <laughs> that probably be better than my videos, but uh, hey, we'll get there eventually. Uh, anyways, that's the, that's the intro. Guys, Coney Island's got so much damn history. People don't realize how important this place has been in just pop culture history and American history, for that matter. Uh, pretty awesome place. Eric, what do you think? Should we just start this thing? Let's get going. Let's go, baby. All right, so I'm here on the beach at Coney Island. Ever heard of it? Anyways, uh, we've got a nice little uh, production value. <laughs> shot here, me sitting down, just relaxing, huh? how cool is that? Anyways, uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about the beginnings of Coney Island. Now, it's called Coney Island, they say, because the Dutch word konin, which means uh, rabbit, uh, was actually invested by rabbits uh, early on. Uh, and, and in fact, in 1609, Henry Hudson uh, parked his boat when he first discovered New York in 1609. He actually parked it over what's today Gravesend, right nearby, and uh, encountered the Native Americans there. And uh, one of his men was shot through the neck with an arrow. Go figure. <laughs> That's got to be a kind of an awkward first interaction. Like, hey, nice to meet you. My name's Henry Hudson. Uh, okay, we were just leaving. See you later. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyways, uh, you know, this actually was an island initially. It was filled in in the later 1800s, but it actually was deserted. Uh, the first hotel wasn't built here until 1829. It was always just kind of a peaceful beach community. People like uh, Samuel Colt tried to build a tower here. Uh, to see ships off the shore in 1840s. And, uh, you know, he abandoned that project. Samuel Colt invented the revolver. He was a professor at NYU. You have Walt Whitman, huh? Walt Whitman used to come down here, the poet. He used to come down here to swim butt naked in the water here because it was so deserted. Uh, all you, I'm sure that, that gets a rise at all you, you Walt Whitman fans, huh? The Walt Whitman fan club. I don't know what you guys call yourselves, the, the Walt Whitman? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, anyway, that's a good, right, Eric? Great. Thank you. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so it wasn't until the, the Civil War that things started to change for this neighborhood. After the Civil War, all the influx of money and people making money in New York, looking for different opportunities to, to, to make uh, hotels and things, they started to grow here. Uh, but this was kind of like a, a center of vice, actually. Uh, you know, people would come out here to gamble, prostitution, they'd come out here to prostitution, uh, do stuff like that. So the uh, New York Times named it Sodom by the Sea, uh, which I always thought was the nickname of the whole state of Florida. Uh, but uh, no, and back then they didn't really have many, many cameras either, so uh, you know, you're gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, here's an artist rendering. Uh, but it was actually lots of vice. In fact, there was a guy named John McCain who actually ran stuff here. You couldn't build anything here from 1870s to the 1890s without his permission. Very much like the mob, very difficult and tough place. Uh, but it started to slowly change in the 1890s uh, when it became more and more connected to the city. Uh, up until that time, there was, you know, uh, there was a few ways to get out here. Uh, it was a little harder. One of the things that actually also was developed here at that time was 1867. Uh, this place called Feltman's was open, a restaurant. And this is a man, Charles Feltman, who claimed to have invented the hot dog. Yeah, yeah, it's just a sausage, but it was his brilliant idea to put it into a hot dog bun. At least he claims that. Uh, Feltman's will, will reappear a little later in the uh, video. So, uh, but yeah, it was that. It was, it was racetracks. It was small hotels. In fact, in 1885, there was a hotel shaped like an elephant uh, by, by Charles uh, Lafferty, 
uh, kind of cool. Uh, it turned into a brothel too. They, they called it uh, seeing the elephant. It was, uh, was code for going to visit a prostitute. Uh, anyways, a lot of stuff going on until the late uh, 1890s, early 1900s, and we'll talk about that in our next stop. You ready to move, Eric? Go. I would normally jump and pop up and uh, walk out of frame, but uh, I think that would hurt too much. Getting old, baby, so let's move on. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so I mentioned uh, Feltman's earlier. Well, at Feltman's, there was a guy who used to work there named Nathan Handworker. He eventually left Feltman's and opened his own joint for hot dogs called Nathan's. Ah, Nathan Handworker, look at that. He actually used this recipe that his wife's grandma handed down in her family, Ida Greenwald, and they started this place. Go figure, his big secret? Charge five cents for a hot dog versus Feltman's 10 cents. Genius. It takes off, becomes a huge, big old thing, and uh, you know continues on to this day here at Na here on uh, Coney Island. Still the same place. Uh, they also do the um, the hot dog eating contest every July Fourth here. Still a big thing. Uh, the story, the lore, is that it started out with a few immigrants who were trying to prove to each other who was the most uh, American. So they ate as many hot dogs as they could, and I, I think it was the guy who won ate uh, 12 in 13 minutes or something. Something like that, pretty pretty nuts, and pretty tame compared to what they eat now. Joey Chestnut holds a record, he ate uh, 74 in 10 minutes. Yeah, I feel sorry for his roommates. They had a call house meeting about that bathroom. Uh, anyways, uh, this is Nathan's, and I'm also next to the subway station here at uh, Stillwell, and this is one of the things that helped Coney Island also kind of explode in um, uh, population and busyness. It didn't come here until 1919, uh, before that, there was a railway that started in like the late 1870s that brought people out here and there obviously was ferries as well, but the subway is really what kind of just started this explosion of people out here. Uh, I mean, it got really crowded here in its heyday. Uh, so, you have the subway here, the BMT is what, what brought you out here. And hot dogs have actually become kind of synonymous with, with the United States. So, uh, for example, FDR served them to the Queen uh, when she came and visited. Uh, you know, they've been, you know, people like Cary Grant and all that stuff used to come here. Also remember, people like uh, Harry Houdini used to come to, to uh, uh, Coney Island a lot. He met his wife here. There's actually a funny story. Uh, Murray Handworker, the son of Nathan, he actually, at one point, some guy came to him and was like, hey man, I got an idea for marketing. I found this 70-ton dead whale. You want me to bring it over here? And Murray's like, of course I do. So they parked this massive whale outside and people, you know, with the idea that people would see it and then eat hot dogs at the same time, wasn't really thought through because it started to smell like shit. So, uh, you know, they had to take it back to the you know, to the water and it ended up exploding with dynamite, I think that's what they ended up doing with it. Which is way cooler, I guess, <laughs> than having it rot in front of a hot dog stand. Anyways, uh, you know, I digress. But yeah, there's all kinds of attractions that came about in the early 1900s, along with, uh, obviously, the amusement parks and stuff, and even more so after the subway got here. But this is Nathan's. What do you think, Eric? Should we keep moving? Let's go. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you how this neighborhood, Coney Island, became kind of the center of amusements, uh, well, at least for a little bit in the entire country. So, in 1895, the first real theme park was opened in it, uh, by a guy named Captain Paul Boyton. Now this guy was some like legendary figure. He crossed the English Channel in a rubber suit. The guy, uh, let's see, what else? He was named a captain because he was hired by the Peruvian Navy to put torpedoes and, and uh, sink Chilean boats which is kind of cool. The guy claimed to have saved 71 people in two years as a lifeguard. He was a real cool guy. I guess today he, would, he might have had like a blue check mark or something, you know? I guess that's how you gauge people. Anyways, this guy opened Sea Lion Park in 1895. It, it's kind of a, a cool thing. It's not what you would think of, but it was an enclosed area that was a theme park, right? It wasn't until 1902 when it's bought by two guys, a guy named Frederick Thompson and Elmer Dundee, and they opened Luna Park in 1903. That the first real big splash of a park is made. Luna Park was a legendary place. Uh, it's named Luna after the sister of Elmer Dundee. Kind of interesting little fact. Uh, but they bought this thing and it was open until 1944. And it was a really, really like uh, important place, like tons of lights. And it was a real amazing like, you know, experience, you know, had different worlds, different uh, countries and different experiences. In fact, someone who said to have been inspired by it was Walt Disney, who used to come and visit here. Um, uh, today it's still open. It was reopened actually in 2010. 
uh, and it continues here today. In fact, one of the rides that's still here is the Cyclone uh, from 1927. Now, this is a roller coaster uh, that, you know, first of all, roller coasters were kind of a, uh, a thing that was, you know, also kind of birthed here a little bit. Um, it really was just, a, there was a thing initially called the switchback uh, train. It was just a thing that took you one side and then came back to the other side. And, you know, it was kind of a using gravity and all that stuff. But the Cyclone was a crazy one. It was just, it's wooden, still around, over 100 years old, almost 100 years old, sorry. And, uh, you know, it go, reaches speeds of up to 60 miles an hour, which back then was pretty fast. I know today you're like, oh, there are people on their e-bikes who almost hit me that go faster than that. Uh, but uh, back then it was pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, and it's still here, pretty, pretty awesome. In fact, there was a guy who wrote it, the, the record is he wrote it for 104 straight hours. That's pretty crazy, huh, Eric? I could not write it for that long. Yeah, you'd be puking up all that, uh, you know, soy that you eat. Wow. <laughs> you eat a lot of soy, don't you? I suppose. I don't know. Anyways, another thing that happened here that's kind of interesting is uh, an elephant called Topsy the Elephant, who, was ho uh, who had his home here, uh, and in 1896, he was actually uh, electrocuted in a video by Thomas Edison to prove the dangers of alternating current versus direct current. Uh, it's actually a video you can still see it on YouTube, actually. <laughs> How's that for a plug? That's, it's kind of a messed up thing to, to like put on YouTube. That's the kind of stuff we're competing with. People over there watching that millions of times. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here with Topsy Elephant. Don't forget to smash that like button. Ugh. Sorry. Anyways, uh, you can watch that video on there somewhere, but that happened here. Kind of crazy. Um, yeah, Luna Park. This is one of the three big parks that were open here at the, in the heyday of the amusement parks. Let's go to the next one. What do you think, Eric? Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, so now I'm in front of the New York Aquarium, which was moved here in the 1940s by a man named Robert Moses. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but this, was the, this used to be the site of Dreamland, which was opened in 1904. So this state senator named William Reynolds saw what Luna Park was doing, saw what the other parks here were doing, including Steeplechase, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And it was a cash grab, baby. Everyone was making money. So he's like, I want to do this too. So he opens Dreamland in 1904, basically building on what Luna Park had already done. So Luna Park had 250,000 lights. This place had a million lights. It was this crazy huge thing. It had kind of, it didn't have like the, the, like the different worlds and all that stuff. It was actually more of like moral tales. Like they had, they had a, you know, like a recreation of Adam and Eve had like Bible stories and stuff come to life, kind of whatever. It doesn't sound like the most exciting thing ever, but you know, back then you were kind of bored. There was no, <laughs> you were kind of looking for stuff to entertain you. So it was really, really, really popular. Uh, now, it also had a private beach. Luna Park back then was located a little further inland, so it didn't have a beach. It was a real big deal until 1911 when it burned down, unfortunately, and it was never revived. So this is 1904 to 1911. Wasn't that long, actually. It also kind of started one of the uh, trends which stuck, which was the live human exhibits. Uh, which eventually became kind of a staple here in Coney Island. So, for example, they had a, uh, a whole area, like of a little town that was made, a miniature town that was inhabited by uh, dwarves. The whole town, like that's what people, they came and that's what they just looked at like a little town with, you know, little people in it. That was the whole thing, you know. Uh, the original It's a Small World, I guess, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, that was pretty good, right, Eric? Yikes. Thanks. Uh, but yeah, they had that. It also had, uh, they had it. Uh, they had, this is kind of weird, they had this whole massive, like, uh, basically, uh, ward of premature babies. Babies were born premature and they had all these incubators and you could just come and look at these babies being incubated. Isn't that crazy? That's people, that was like one of the attractions of this place. Uh, I guess that one was called It's a Premature World, after all. Double yikes. Yikes is right. But that people would come to see that stuff. Uh, so this is kind of the origination of that, uh, uh, but, but yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, Dreamland was located right here. We're going to talk about Moses and all that stuff in a second, but this is where it used to be. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, so we're at the last stop of the, the original three parks here in uh, Coney Island. This is, first of all, this is the parachute jump. Uh, this was actually built originally for the 1939 World's Fair, Flushing Meadows, Corona Park. Oh, how cool is that? And then it was moved here in the early 1940s. Uh, this here is where Steeplechase Park was located. Steeplechase Park actually opened in 1897, so it actually predated Luna and Dreamland. Uh, but it was one of the three big parks here on the water. Uh, it was Steeplechase, and there was a space there, and then it was Dreamland, and then in the back, Luna Park was actually off of the beach. Uh, so this is where Steeplechase Park was located. It's called Steeplechase Park because the main ride was called the Steeplechase. Oh, and it was actually basically, uh, you would ride on a horse, and it would take you like you were going through a steeplechase ride. It would make jumps and it was all on tracks. And the women would ride in the back, the men would ride in the front. So if you were, you know, uh, a man 
you were, you were paired up with a woman randomly, a random stranger. Which brings up the Tilly uh, mascot that I was, uh, that you may recognize, the big tooth guy with the hair parted and everything. That actually was the, uh, the logo for Steeplechase, uh, called Tilly, because George Tilly, who actually opened the park, uh, he's got a big old smirk, uh, probably because it's the guy who's sitting in front of a stranger woman behind him. Uh, maybe he just got a big old smirk because of that. It was located here until 1964. Uh, George Tilly actually famous for saying the quote, uh, if Paris is France, then June through September, Coney Island is the world. Because that's what it was. It was a place where people from all over the world came. People forget that Coney Island really was like the center of amusements uh, in the early 1900s. Like I said, it influenced people like Walt Disney, and it really kind of invented the amusement park. So Steeplechase Park actually was closed in 1964, and the land was sold to a man named Fred Christ Trump. You may recognize that name because this was Donald Trump's father. He bought the land uh, and uh, the city was kind of looking at the, 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 the amusements and everything and saving them, looking into maybe landmarking. Before they were able to though, uh, Fred Trump threw up demolition party and uh, for all the VIPs and everything that came, he handed out rocks and bricks and they threw them through the windows and basically demolished everything before the city was able to, uh, you know, save it. He was, all, he was doing it all based on the possibility of getting it rezoned for him to build a luxury condos and everything. The rezoning didn't go through because his candidate did not win the mayoral election of 1965. Uh, he was gunning on Abe Beam and John Lindsay won. So he was stuck with his property. He ended up selling it a few years later at a hefty profit uh, to the city. Go figure. But the parachute jump is still located here. Uh, kind of saved it. And today, uh, what's on this land is the Brooklyn Cyclones, which is the minor league team uh, here in Brooklyn, and uh, Abe Stark uh, Skating Rink. Not the first time there was a demolition or a problem with the park. In 1907, actually, there was a huge fire in Steeplechase Park, and George Tillyou made it a point to build it back better and stronger. By 1909, it was back up and running. And in the meantime, he actually charged people 10 cents to look at the ruins of the burnt park. Can't make this stuff up, folks. You gotta, you know, you gotta watch videos like mine to learn about it. Anyways, uh, this was the former site of Steeplechase Park. What do you think, Eric? Should we keep moving to the next spot? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, the reason we're even in this weird angle is because if someone's on the boardwalk blasting uh, music, hey, that's part of it. I just don't want to get copyright stricken. Uh, so we're out here in the parking lot. <laughs> Whatever, it's still a good angle. We're doing what we can. Let's go to the next spot. All right, so now we're next to uh, Dino's Wonder Wheel. This is actually one of the older rides here. I know, no worries, I'm just kind of hanging out at a kid's playground. Not creepy at all, especially with my facial hair and long hair. I'm sure this doesn't look odd, but look, it's all about the shot, baby. Look at that thing, pretty good. Anyways, this thing was built in 1920. Uh, actually, the person who built it was named uh, Charles Herman. He'd actually seen the original one at the Chicago uh, Exposition, a World's Fair there. Uh, it was with the original one, Ferris Wheel, was actually named after a guy named Ferris uh, in 1893, but he wanted to build one here immediately. So he built this one, and it's been here since 1920. Uh, it was bought by a guy named Dino Vuderis in uh, 1983 because uh, it was kind of sitting around uh, you know and they were going to tear it down there was talks of all kinds of things but he revived it made it nice now there's a little park around there uh, by the way a little fun fact about him obviously he's a greek immigrant with a name like that but he's also uh, uh, one of 22 children isn't that crazy 22 children yeah this is uh his mother after giving birth to the last 22nd child um, but yeah he, uh, he opened this, and the reason he said he opened it, he wanted it to be a ring for his wife. The biggest ring possible to show everyone how much love he had for her. It could be seen from everywhere, and it would last forever. Uh, but probably won't last forever. I hate to break it to him. <laughs> you know, uh, those things fall apart eventually. But uh, never been an accident on it. Perfect safety record, which is kind of cool. Also, it only shut down once, and that was during the blackout of 77. Uh, so yeah, the tradition of, of uh, you know, of different, um, you know, theme parks and amusement parks here in Coney Island lives on, which is nice. Uh, but we're gonna talk about the changes in the neighborhood here in a second. Eric, should we uh, leave this playground? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we should. All right, let's go. Okay, so now I'm at the boardwalk here. Uh, the original boardwalk was actually, well, first of all, it just got landmarked, 2018. 
Yeah, all right, great. But in 1923 was in it when it was originally built by a man named Edward Regelman. He was a Brooklyn politician. Their purpose was to draw a line in the sand, literally, 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 to keep the amusements from encroaching. It was expanded by a guy named uh, Robert Moses to actually encroach on the amusements because he hated them so much in 1941. He also brought in tons and tons of housing projects because he didn't like this area. He didn't like the amusements and he also didn't like poor people in the city. So if he could warehouse human beings here way outside of this, the quote, you know, Manhattan, all that stuff, he did. So it also brought the neighborhood down. So the neighborhood started to kind of slowly decline. Then we get to the 1970s. By the 1970s, it was not in good shape. And you have things like the Warriors, right? That was back when it was, uh, you know, not so great, right? Uh, also, by the way, fun fact, real fun fact, uh, Warriors was based on something that actually really happened in the early 1970s. This gang member tried to unite all the gangs and he got murdered. Uh, real fun fact, <laughs> murder, okay, anyways. Uh, things start to kind of be, uh, people in the neighborhood start to try to revitalize it. The Mermaid Parade is started in 1983 by a guy named Dick Ziggin, who's the unofficial mayor of Coney Island. Uh, and then fast forward to today and you have developers coming in. Uh, because what happens is developers come into a neighborhood where it's, where it's very uh, depressed to make all that profit by building it up. And what they did, specifically one company named Thor Equities, came in and bought a lot of this depressed land, very, very cheap, pushed the city to rezone it for high density residential, and then quadruple, quintuple, even more their money overnight. Uh, but in the process, they basically try to maximize the value for themselves by creating high density uh, luxury housing, etc. Also tearing down the amusements, uh, you know, pushing out small mom and pops and changing the neighborhood uh, overnight. Uh, you may be thinking that's what, what's so bad about that. It's, it's cleaner, it's, it's maybe safer, etc. Uh, well, there, it's also not very uh, equitable. It's not for everybody. It's, it's really just kind of catering to one group uh, and you kind of lose a lot of the culture and things that made it what it is. Also open the door for lots of franchises that have been coming in the neighborhood, also pushing out mom and pop shops. That's what New York's famous for. People come here from all over the world because they want to see these little pizzerias and all these different things. If it was all Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts, which it's slowly becoming, no one would want to visit here. You could just go to, you know, Boise or wherever, you know. Sorry, I'm going off on a rant. <laughs> that being said, don't want to be totally negative, but that's kind of what's happening in the neighborhood today. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Eric, what do you think? Should we wrap this thing up? Let's go, baby. <sighs> Look at us. We made it to the end. Eric, did you learn a lot? I did. Yeah, I believe you. Boy, there isn't a quiz or anything, is there? No. Uh, take it easy. But we learned a lot, guys. We went through the whole history of Coney Island. Man, we started when it was just a kind of a deserted beach. When we went to when it became slowly a seaside resort. Then it became the center of amusements for hell, the United States, huh? Then it became, uh, you know, it kind of became more of like a sideshows and all that kind of thing. Then it declined, unfortunately. Then we got into basically the present, which it's rebuilding and all that kind of thing. We went through a lot. We went through a lot. Uh, but guys, let this be a lesson. All good things must come to an end, and here we are at the end. Uh, if you enjoyed it, which I assume you did if you made it this far, <laughs> you know, I put two and two together there, please check out the Patreon. There's extras on there. Uh, like I said, I, I do a little uh, exclusive little podcast on there. Huh? I do uh, I have some, uh, you know, extra videos, uh, recommendations, all that kind of thing on there. Uh, so check that out. That's how we find these things. Also, please like the video, subscribe. That helps bump us in the analytics. Uh, you know, ahead of all the... Uh, Sand castle contest videos. Wow. Actually sounds kind of cool. Uh, but you know what? Maybe maybe we we'll, a close second to those. How about that? Um, anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Eric, you got any questions? About Coney Island? About life. Uh, no, no, I think I'm pretty good, Tom. Oh yeah, you got it all figured out, huh? Why yeah. don't you rub it in, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, let's uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's call it. Go uh, go have ourselves a. Uh, a little snow cone and go to the aquarium wow. and uh all right i'm rambling all right guys thanks for watching see y'all later hope you guys enjoyed it uh can you dig it